Hi, it's Chris here from Canadian Mosaic English Language School and we're going to talk about how to write a letter today. And so this is task one for the IELTS general test. Um, speaking of the IELTS test, this is not something that is special for the IELTS test, this letter that we must write. What you need is standard letter writing structure. And so where can you find it? Look in an English as a second language textbook. Look in an academic English language textbook. The same kind of textbooks that you studied at university or at high school or hopefully in a private school if you were studying writing at a private school. This is where you can find this stuff. As well, Google's your friend. Google it. Google standard letter writing structure or standard letter structure and see what you get. I'll tell you what you're going to get. First of all, you're going to get <clears throat> paragraph one. It is who you are and the purpose of your letter. So, while I'm here, I need to fill this up with details and examples and things. I need to demonstrate my English. And so, um, what can I say? Think of three things about myself. If I'm writing this letter to my landlord as a formal letter to complain about the conditions of my apartment. Dear Mr. Landlord, my name is Chris Enders. I live in the Paradise Apartment at 1259 85th Street in Edmonton. I've lived here for two years in apartment number 259, which is a two-bedroom apartment. It faces the south side of the building. and. My purpose in writing this letter to you today is to inform you of several issues that I'm having in my apartment. And so this is paragraph number one. Who am I? I need details. Detail one. Detail two. Detail three. And then give the points, give the examples, specific things about it. And then we go on to paragraph two. And so now we can look at the bullet points that are in those questions. And so bullet point one is about, tell about your problems. And so I'm going to say problem number one. Um, I'd like to discuss with you the problem of my electricity. And so, main idea one, main idea two, or detail one, two, three about my electricity problems. So, the first problem I'd like to discuss with you is about the electricity in my apartment. Um, the electricity often goes off unexpectedly. For example, yesterday when my family was having movie night, the power cut out right in the middle of our movie and ruined our family time together. Secondly, <clears throat> I don't think that the wiring in my apartment is very safe. For example, around the electrical outlets, the wallpaper has started to get brown colored because of the heat. And the third problem that I have with my electricity in my apartment is that my power bill has suddenly gotten much more expensive. It's usually this much money, but this month it was suddenly this much money, and I can't explain it. And so I think there's some kind of a problem here as well. The second problem that I want to tell you about is the problem with my water. And the same thing, problem two. And the uh, details. And uh, examples. EG means example. 
and problem three. Put a problem three in there and examples two. The thing about having a complex structure is that now you can use lots of different vocabulary words. We've got general idea words, we've got details, and we're telling stories or explaining things with specific real life examples. And so my vocabulary is really wide, which is exactly what it says on the IELTS band descriptors about what you need for vocabulary. A wide range of vocabulary and used accurately, which means few mistakes. If I don't use much vocabulary, even if I don't make many mistakes, I'm not getting to eight because I just haven't shown a wide enough range. It's the same thing with your cohesion and coherence scores, your transition signals and signposts and things. First, second, third, moreover, furthermore, on the other hand, besides, all of these words, if I don't have enough ideas, how can I use all of these words? I'm stuck with a first, second, third, and that's all. That's not a wide range. And so you need a wide range of ideas to be able to use a wide range of English tools and then show your mastery or show your skill in using them. And so here we go again, back to this. You've got paragraph one, who you are and the purpose of your letter. Paragraph two, problems if you're writing a complaint letter. And then um, after this, you've got the third bullet point. Which is about the future. And so if I'm complaining to my landlord, it's let's talk about schedules so we can fix these problems and so regarding my electricity problem i am free between this time and this time on this day this day and this day and so you can send a repairman over the, with about the second issue it's going to take more than just one time or it's going to take a long time to fix this problem and so i suggest that someone come over on the weekend to fix it. I'll be free on this day from this time to this time and on that day from that time to that time. And thirdly about that and again explain it. Very important. Talk about time. Times and schedules. Oops. For each one of these points, make a plan about it for the future, and discuss it. Remember, just like we filled up this, we need to fill up these with details and examples. Then I can show my range of vocabulary, I can show my range of connective words, I can show my range of grammar. Again, because I've got all of these different ideas and the details and the examples for them, now I can put them all into nice, long, complex sentences with lots of um, conjunctions, which, while, when, where, who, whose, whom, that, and join them together with some coordinating conjunctions in the same sentence. And, or, but, nor, so, yet, um, for. And so when I do this, now I'm going to get that nice high grammar score because I've got, instead of just one or two ideas in one sentence, I've got three or four or even five ideas in one sentence. And now I'm pushing that score up into the mastery bands. And so, in a nutshell, this is what you do for a letter. And so again, paragraph one, who you are and what you want. Paragraph two, lay out your problems or your points, the bullet points. Think of them as main ideas and what you need to do are fill in the details and the examples for each one. And then a nice little summary at the end. Um, if we're talking about an informal letter, for example, inviting your friend to your new house. Hey buddy, it's me, Chris. It's been such a long time since we met. I think that the last time was at 
Bob's wedding and that was a really good time. Since then a lot of things have happened to me like this and this and this and I'm writing this letter to you today to inform you of some super exciting news. Namely, I got a new house. And so, the first thing that I want to tell you about my house is the neighborhood. And now, the first thing about my neighborhood is it's very, very beautiful. For example, there's trees and flowers and everything everywhere. And secondly, it's a nice neighborhood for my kids. For example, there's parks and swimming pools and everything nearby. And thirdly, it is a new neighborhood. And so all of the infrastructure works and it's clean and great. And secondly, I'll tell you about my yard and three things about my yard. And so, buddy, I really miss you. And I think we should get together soon. And so if you're free in the next couple of weeks, I've got some time off on the weekend, on this weekend and this weekend, and we could get together then. Or if you can't come anytime soon, I've got holidays during the summer. And in this month and this week, we could get together and you could come over and hang out for a few days. Or if you're too busy for any of that, maybe we could just meet on Zoom or on Skype sometime and we'll have a little chat. And so, it's nice to talk to you, buddy. Thinking of all of these things and about sharing them with you has made me really happy. I hope to see you again soon. Sincerely, your buddy, Chris. Something like that. And so there is the paragraph structure. Very simple. What you need to do is remember to fill in details and examples. And so then you can use your complex grammar and your wide range of connective devices and everything else that goes along with this. So practice makes perfect. Get your IELTS books, your IELTS general training books. Find these questions, turn on the timer and start writing. You know that you're going to be able to reach a band seven, eight, nine, if you can complete the full structure that we've talked about here, and you can do it in 15 minutes. If you can't, it means you're not ready to do the test yet. And so you need to keep training. And so every time you do it, turn on the timer and practice the structure. Hopefully you go faster and faster and faster every time you do it. And when you can get done in the proper time, you know that you're ready to take the test. So that's just about all I've got to tell you about this. Thanks a lot and happy training.